Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you my after school riding routine with Johnny and Print. So usually I get home from school about 4.25pm and then I immediately head out around 4.30 to ride the ponies. I grab my coat and also put on my boots and then head straight out to the yard. We have a hanging willow tree in our back garden and I like to take advantage of this because the ponies all really like willow and it's actually really good for them. So I just grab a couple of handfuls, just enough so I can give all three ponies some and then head up to the stables. Once I'm up at the stables, I go say hello to all of the boys. I say hi to Johnny first, give him some of the willow and then I go over to see Princey who I have to give a kiss to, obviously, because he's adorable. And he also gets some willow. He is just so cute. He does give the best kisses ever. Look at that nose. Oh, bless him. And then I head over to Rocco, whilst Prince gets the biggest mouthful because he's my bestest boy. Rocco gets some as well. Give little Rockstar a hug. He is so cute. And then I get ready to ride Johnny first. The reason they are all in is because in summer when it's hot, we like to bring them in to get them off the grass and away from the flies. They all go out at night, it's just in the day in summer. When they come in, they always have a little sleep and whilst I'm at school, mum picks out their feet so it gives their hooves some time to air rather than being covered in mud and dirt the whole time. Obviously, to start off, I groom Johnny and pick out his feet. I have to go see Prince first, of course, because look at him. And then, of course, Rocco as well. So I head to the feed room and get the brushes and the hoof pick. As you can see, there's a box with the hoof pick. And this is just so when I pick out the pony's feet, the yard doesn't get all messy and it just goes into the box. I always try my best to be very hands-on with Johnny and brush all over his face to get him used to being touched around the ears and his eyes and his forelock because when he came over from Ireland he was quite worried about his face being touched but because I've exposed him a lot to it and given him lots of brushes over his face he's so much more confident with it now and doesn't get worried or flinches when I go near his face so that's just why I make a very deliberate point of brushing his face. Here you can just see I'm brushing all the main areas of his body underneath his belly where his girth will be, where his saddle will be. I'm not worrying very much about stains or anything because he's grey and you know sometimes you just gotta let them be yellow <laughs> especially in the summer months when he's out most of the time. So that's why I'm just giving him a quick brush and not getting any cleaning spray on him. So now I'm just putting on his saddle and Johnny wears his poly pad with a thin line um, half pad over the top underneath the saddle. We're very lucky because Prince's jumping saddle actually fits Johnny almost perfectly. So that's really helpful for us because we didn't have to buy another saddle for him. So I just put that on top and do it all up so it's nice and comfortable for him before putting his girth on.
makes me really proud to watch these videos because when we got him he was a little bit wary of anybody lifting anything up putting like a numner on or a saddle on but as you can see here he really doesn't mind at all now and he's totally fine with me messing about around him doing up his girth fiddling with a saddle yeah he's such a good boy <laughs> Next I get myself ready to ride and I take off my boots and put on my tread step short field boots and also my chaps. These are so comfortable and I literally wear them every day. <laughs> I couldn't fault these. Of course I put my hat on as well and my hat is from Champion. This hat is so nice and never gives me a headache. I never get very sweaty under it. It is such a nice hat and so comfortable. So once I'm all ready to ride, I crack on with getting Johnny ready and I just put his bridle on. He has a neck strap, which is from Supercross Country, and he wears a Fulmer snaffle. The reason we use a Fulmer on him is because it just has some cheek pieces, which means he has a little bit more stability in his contact. So he doesn't feel the need to wiggle so much as it has those cheek pieces just mean the side of his mouth is more stable and he just feels more comfortable as he's a baby. Obviously, as he grows up, we will change a bit with him as he matures. But for now, this is working really well and I'm really happy with how he's going in it. Again, you can see here how me being really hands-on with him and going all around his ears and his face just means he isn't sensitive around those areas and putting his bridle on is no problem anymore. It used to be a bit of a fight because he used to chuck his head up and not really want me to touch his ears, which obviously made putting the headpiece on quite difficult. But now, because I've done lots of practice with stroking his ears, stroking his eyes, brushing him, grooming his forelock, he's totally fine with it and it's a really easy task. The final thing I do before I get on is change my stirrup length because I'm schooling Johnny and I jump for instance in this saddle and the last time I'd actually ridden in it was at my BE event so it's still my cross country length so I had to change all the stirrup levers to make them the correct length for me to school Johnny in so I put them down a couple of holes he just stood there like a really good boy before getting ready to get on. So mounting, this is where I think we are having the biggest trouble at the moment. Because he's a baby, he is quite unsure about me getting up and putting my foot in that stirrup. So the moment I go there, he just moves and swings his bum round and I don't want to throw myself onto his back and scare him. So I just have to stay really calm, patient, even though it takes a few tries, getting up onto that mounting block, putting my foot in stirrup. And as you can see, he moves, reverses. So I keep trying, practice makes perfect, and I'm sure in a few more times he will be perfectly fine at it. As you can see here, I'm just going very slowly, very calmly, making sure I'm not doing any sudden movements, being really comfortable and making sure he's happy. And there we go, he did it perfectly fine that time. Stood there like a good boy, and it's exactly what I'm aiming for him to do every time. And the main thing with babies is I can't get them to be scared or make it, a bad experience every time it's just got to be reward them for the good behavior and don't negatively tell them off for when they do something wrong because they don't really understand that it's really good with youngsters to have positive reinforcement and that's what I'm trying to do with Johnny
Once we're in the menage, I just make sure my girth is all done up, ready to start our warm up. I want to make sure it's all nice and tight and he's not going to have any risk of his saddle slipping, which has possibly scare him. As I said, all got to be a good experience for him. So I start just by walking him around, making sure he's all loosened up. I don't want him to be stiff and immediately ask him to trot. Just get a nice swinging walk, swinging over his back, stepping through and forward. And then I start trotting. As with the walk, the main aim at the start of our session isn't to ask for a contact or anything in the trot. I just want him going forward and accepting my leg aids. I don't want him to back off my leg because as he's a youngster, he needs to learn right from the beginning that my leg means go. As you can see here, because he's quite unbalanced, he tends to lose his shoulder around the corners, especially at the start. So I go around a few more times to make sure I'm just telling him what he's doing wrong here and showing him how he can do it properly before changing the rein and starting our trot work on the other rein. As you can see here, as he's warming up and becoming more supple, he's offering a tiny bit of contact for me. I'm aiming to get this contact by the end of the session quite consistent, as this is what we're aiming for in the long term, a lovely, consistent, relaxed, supple contact. And the moment he offers it, I reward him and stop asking with my hands because he needs to be holding it by himself. Now he's starting to soften, I ask for canter and let him just canter around the school, making sure he's again nice and open and he was actually amazing this day. It was one of the first times he immediately offered me a tiny bit of contact in canter. He went from being very unbalanced in his canter to suddenly being really long and low, relaxed and working over his back. So I was really, really pleased and you'll hear in the later clips. I'm really praising it with my voice because it's so important that they know when they're doing well now i'm just having another canter on the other rein again just letting him bowl along not asking for anything but you can see here he's almost doing it by himself and just offering me that tiny bit of flexion and suppleness through his neck i again i'm so pleased in this day i can't believe how awesome he was As he's still growing, I make sure I give him lots of little breaks just so he can process what's going on before starting off again. And now we've had a canter on both reins and we're feeling a little bit more warmed up. He's given me a lot more of a consistent contact and I'm starting to incorporate some serpentine, some half circles, lots of different things just to make sure his brain's working and keeping him on his toes the whole time so he's not just trotting around in circles. Here I'm starting to incorporate some tiny leg yields, literally three meters across the arena, just so he learns from a young age to move off my leg. And it's so important that he knows my leg means move away from it and not always just forward. It can also mean move left and right. And he actually did this so well. It was his first ever time trying leg yields and he did really well to move off of it. So that's a really positive step forward. Another good way to keep them off the leg is to do transitions and this is why I'm doing some walk trot transitions across the diagonal as it just means he's moving forward and again he's off my leg. As you can probably see, as the session goes on, he starts to offer a much more consistent contact, even in the canter, which I'm really, really happy about. I'm just making sure I'm doing lots of circles on the canter so he feels happy and balanced and trying to keep up his muscle in all the correct places where they should be for the future when he'll be properly asked to hold a contact in the canter.
to end our session, I always like to head up the centre line and halt just like it would be in a test. So he's starting to learn what would happen in a real test situation. I make sure I'm rewarding him, telling him what a good boy he is, as that was a really good session. And it's so rewarding to have such a lovely baby who tries his heart out all the time. Once I'm back at the stables, I tie him up and take off his bridle as well as taking off his saddle. And I also pick out his feet so he doesn't have any rubber tire in his feet. And then I just give him a tiny sponge down with some cold water to get off any of the sweat because it was quite hot this day and I didn't want any of the flies bothering him. He was also quite hot so I just wanted to cool him down as he'd worked so hard. And then I just put him back in his stable so he can have a sleep whilst I ride Prince. Since I also ride Prince in that saddle, I just leave it on the mounting block on his numna, all ready to put on Prince when he's ready to be ridden. So now it's Princey's turn. He is such a pleasure to ride and I just love doing anything with him. So I get his head colour, get it all on him. He's just adorable, look at him. <laughs> and then I bring him out and of course I give him a groom, pick out his feet, get him all ready to ride. Oh, that's a wonky head colour. Good thing I fixed it. He's actually surprisingly clean already, so all I had to do really was get any dust off of him so his saddle didn't rub him. Once he's all clean, I just put on his saddle and do up the girth.
Once the saddle is all on and the girth is done up, I head to the tack room to get my high vis, his bridle and my gloves. It's really important you wear a high vis at all times while tacking as it can save your life because it gives cars the chance to see you and slow down. As you can see here, Prince actually puts the bit in his mouth for me. He's so cute, all you do is just hold it up and he just puts it in. I always like to, with any horse, make sure it's all comfortable around their ears, so untuck their forelock, just so there's nothing irritating them whilst I ride. Finally, I just check my girth one more time to make sure it's not going to slip whilst I get on and then take him over to the mounting block. Here he is getting some hugs from mum and I because he's such a good boy. Mum has to go to the gate to open it for me because it's locked and I can't do it whilst I'm on him. Put some songs on Prince As you heard, I always like to put on songs whilst I'm riding as long as I'm not on roads as that's not safe. So as soon as I get on the tracks, I just put on my Spotify playlist. And here I'm uploading a video for my Instagram of Prince. Going to regret putting that video in of me singing, but there's more of those to come. So before I can tell, I always check my girth to make sure the saddle's tightly done up. Here we are having our one and only canter of the day. He is such a good boy on hacks and everywhere. He just pulls along. I really don't do anything in canter and I just enjoy it and sing along to my songs. <laughs> The next few clips are quite embarrassing. They're of me having a complete dance party and also really enjoying singing to some of my favorite songs. Here we come to my favourite part of the hack. You can either go over the ditch or over the little bridge. Obviously, I like to jump the ditch. When I'm on the roads, I always make sure I thank the car drivers and the cyclists as it's really important with polite. It looked really cute and nice, so I decided to take a photo here of him happily walking along the roads. And then we have all arrived home. On this day, I actually decided to take him into the garden so he could have some more willow, as I know he loves it.
once we were back at the yard i hopped off and took off his saddle and his bridle again i picked out his feet just like i did with johnny just to make sure there were no stones or anything left in his hooves I don't recommend just leaving your pony on the yard without a head collar, but Prince does it by himself. He just stands there. He is such a good boy. Obviously, I do recommend tying your pony up as that isn't really safe unless you know your pony for certain won't move. Prince is awesome and just stands right there. So that's why I didn't tie him up or anything. I always try my best to do stretches after every ride as it just makes sure he's all nice and loose and not stiff. Once he's finished all his stretches, I just put him in his stable with his Dodson Horror feed. He absolutely loves this and I do have a What I Feed My Horses video coming soon so stay tuned for that. The last thing I do before heading inside to do my homework is take off my boots, my chaps and my hat. And then, yeah, that's the end of my after school riding routine with Johnny and Prince. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe for more. of my heart.